hello again. Welcome to the third episode of how to use graph uh, software. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about how to graph not a function this time, but a relation. Remember that the main difference of a function from a general relation can be seen in the graph. And based from the graph, we can use the vertical line text to tell whether that relation is a function or a mere relation. Circles, for example, or parabolas opening to the left or to the right, or we have our hyperbolas, some of the hyperbolas. Those are examples of a relation and not a function because uh, they do not pass the vertical line. So how do we graph these kinds of uh, equation. As I have said, they are merely relations in that a function. If that is the case, we cannot actually use the add function button because this is only for uh, valid functions. We have another button for that. We can actually use this button. It's x less than y uh, button. If we click this one, we have another bar to enter a relation. So, we can actually check this one. I have prepared your set of relations that we want to uh, graph. Let's start with a, a vertical line. A vertical line is of course not a function. It fails the vertical line test. A horizontal line is a function. So if you are graph graphing a horizontal line, then you can make use of the function, the add function button. A horizontal line is of the form y equal to so C here is any real number. If you want to input a horizontal line, just uh, identify that part of the y-axis where you want your horizontal line to cross at. So that is uh, given by our constant C. But for vertical lines, it's of the form x equal to C. As we can see here, uh, it's not a function, it's just a relation. So we can encode as this. So let's say I want a vertical line passing through the constant 3 in my x-axis. That means I have to encode x equal to 3. Because again, I want that vertical line to pass at this number, at this constant. So if we click this one, it will give us a vertical line. Uh, my color right now is in green, on green. Uh, maybe I want to change that into black. Yes. Or black is boring anymore. I want another darker color. Maybe blue. Yes. That's our vertical line that we want. If we want to put a restriction, a constraint, what is the use of this constraint? If we do not want our line to be Setting indefinitely, it, it looks like a vertical line that ends above or below, or we do not know. So if we want to emphasize, or if we want to show the arrowheads on the graph, we can actually uh, put a constraint. So we want our y, this time we are restricting the y, the y axis, the y value. We are restricting y to be uh, less than uh, maybe 2 but uh, greater than negative. So maybe uh, that's the restriction, the constraint that we want. So it's just a very simple inequality. This is, this is read as y is less than 2, but greater than or equal to negative. Oh, there's no equal there. y is less than 2, but greater than negative 2. Actually, we can also put less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. Uh, what, how do we describe this one? We do not need a description. It's in the legend. It's x minus 2. I want the big to be 2 so it will be thicker. And there we have it. A vertical line from positive 2 going down to negative 2. So it's constrained. It's restricted. So those are our vertical lines. If we want to draw another vertical line at different x-axis or I mean at a different x value, then we simply change uh, what we encoded here, so it's x equal to some other constant. What else, what relations can we graph here? I have here our different conic sections. We have a parabola opening to the left or to the right, 
because if it's opening upward or downwards, we can actually input that in our uh, function, function button. We have our circles, ellipse, and hyperbola. I have already uh, included here the form so that it would be more easier for us to include. For example, we want a, a parabola opening uh, horizontally, sidewards. We can use the form. We have a y minus k. I mean h. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Y minus k squared equal to like that a x minus a. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, this form, this is called the vertex form of a, a parabola. If the variable y is squared, that is opening either to the left or to the right. Uh, whether it's to the left or to the right, it's uh, actually uh, given by the sign of a here. Each and k represents the, the vertex of the parabola. So, of course, we have to put something in here for k, a, and h before we can actually graph it on our program. Uh, it cannot graph a general equation. So maybe let's choose uh, 2 for k. And then 7 for a. Okay, this could be uh, addition, meaning the, the coordinate h is a negative one. It's a negative number. So I want to choose positive 3. So let us uh, encode this one in our relation button. So let's click on this one and then encode as this. I forgot square to square to the right or the left part. So we have y minus 3 quantity squared equals 7 open parenthesis x plus 3. Let us look first at uh, how it looks like. There we have it. It is a parabola opening to the it's a parabola opening to the right. Okay. So again, if we want to restrict or to give a const uh, constraint on our y-axis, we can do that. It's easily uh, done here. If we make 7 negative, what happens? So let's edit our relation instead of um, positive 7, let's make it negative. Yeah, it's just a parabola, this time open to the left. So as I have mentioned a while back, the sign of A here uh, tells us whether it's open to the right or to the left. If it's positive, it's open to the right. If it's negative, it's open the other way to the left. What else can we graph here? What other relations, what are the other cutting sections that we can graph? We have our circles. So the general form of a circle is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared all equated to 1. I mean the sum equated to, to 1. Again, h and k here represents the, the center of the circle. So if I want a circle. I want a circle centered at, uh, say, negative 2 and positive 7. So where is the center is at negative 2 and positive 7. So what quadrant is this for? A negative x-axis and a positive y-axis. That's in the second quadrant. So if we graph this one, this circle, if we graph the circle, it should be located in the second quadrant. So let's do that. So again, we let's use uh, our relation button. Just encode as, as is. We have x plus 2 quantity squared plus y minus 7 quantity squared all equal to 1. So where is that? circle. Of course, we cannot see it because it's there, up there.
uh, we have an error. We did not we did not put the exponent of the the first expression. So it should be squared. So there we have it, the circle centered at negative 2 and positive 7. It's really a circle. If we want to uh, change, of course, the, the radius of this circle, how can we do that? We can actually uh, change it here. So instead of 1, this is that's the radius, 1. If we want to change it to 2 units, then we should include 2 squared. So let's change 1 to 2 squared. So it becomes a bigger circle of radius. If we want it, if we want the radius to be 4 units, then we make it 4 squared. So actually, uh, this is not yet the most general form of a circle. This is said to be a circle of any center, but the, the radius is fixed to 1. But if you want a more general one, the, the form is x minus b quantity squared, y minus b quantity squared, r squared, r is the radius desired. So th that is our circles. Let us now proceed to our ellipse. So we see here that uh, it's almost the same with our circle except for the denominators that are constant. So that those numbers e and b tells us the the width and the length of the, the ellipse that we want to. Um, we have the minor axis and the major axis. That's the proper term. So we can see here the general form. We, we would like to, to graph a specific ellipse. So let us let us just identify one example of it. So we have x quantity squared, that's addition y quantity squared, we have numbers here, numbers here, all related to that. So we want to change each a, a, and b. So maybe we want to use, this time I want 4, and then we have 5, and then I want here to be, I want the number here to be 2 squared, and then this one is 3 squared. This means this is 4 and this is 9. So let us encode that one. Let's verify if it's really a, an ellipse. Relation button. So we have x minus 4 quantity squared all over 4. plus y plus 5 what is squared over 9 equal to 1 and is that it? where is that ellipse? there we have it, the ellipse it's an oval ellipse uh, this is an ellipse, not an oval so that is the the major axis in the the binary axis. If we, as I have said, if we want to change the dimension, the, the major axis in the uh, minor axis, we change the values for a n. For hyperbola, it's almost also similar to ellipse, except that the operation in between them is minus, is a subtraction. So let's just use this example and see. So this is an ellipse. But if we change this one to subtraction, it becomes a hyperbola. So quickly, let us change this one into minus. To verify that it becomes, from ellipse, it becomes a hyperbola. So there we have it. This is how a hyperbola should look like. So it is either opening face to face. Uh, it's either the, the openings are facing to the left and right or top and below. So how can we do that? We can change uh, the values of A and B here. So if we make this one greater, so A is greater than B, then the hyperbola will be rotated so that the openings 
is uh, directed upward and downward. In this case, the, the value of B is higher, greater than the value of A. That's why the opening is directed to the left or to the right. So that's how we change the orientation of our hyperbola. If we rotate that one now, it becomes A. Uh, it, it, it's still a relation. It will never be a function. What else in store here? What can we draw? Inequalities. So aside from our relations, we can actually use this button here to graph inequalities. So what is our first form here? Our first example of an inequality, we have x plus y greater than 2. Let's do that. x plus y greater than 2. So x plus y greater than 2 is almost the same as the graph of x plus y equal to 2. Except that it is an inequality. Less than 2. It's the same as x plus y equal to 2, but it's not. It's just the line is the same, but we need to shade either to the left to the right because it is an inequality. So that is uh, the solution. So in terms of the graph of this inequality, this is the solution. So we can do this one. Uh, no, not a function. Let's graph the second one. What's that second one? x minus y. This time, it's the difference of x and y less than or equal to negative 5. x minus y less than, that's the symbol for less than, but how do we input or equal? Simply add the equal sign. So that is how we input less than or equal to negative 5. Let me change the color from blue to red so we can see it in the graph. So there we have it, the corresponding graph for our second inequality. What if uh, we want to graph a very simple interval? This is x less than 7 but greater than negative. It's very easy. Just do the same. What is that? x is less than 7 but greater than negative 3. So negative 3, x, 7. Come on. Maybe this yellow. No, that can't be visible. How about this one? So there we have it. It's actually a, a vertical line with some uh, shades. Similarly, uh, in the constraint, we can do that. So if we want to constrain uh, this, the last, the third graph, we can do it by indicating the constraint here. So if you want uh, your y, if you want your graph to start from somewhere else, for example, let me position this one first. Because it's easier for us. There. Uh, maybe we want to graph to show the graph of this inequality from y less than three but greater than negative three. So we remove we remove the part of the graph above three and below negative three. So we do that here. We are constraining y to be less than positive three but greater than negative 3. So what happens if we click OK? So we have a restricted graph. Actually, we can also restrict the portion in terms of the, the x-axis. So we can add a constraint here. Instead of restricting this uh, inequality in the y-axis, we can also do the same in the uh, x-axis. So we can just... Uh, do the same this time our variable that the variable that we are restricting is x. So x maybe I want the graph to uh, start from 4 but it should start but it should end so I mean it, it should start from negative 2 and end with 4 so what happens to the graph if we click ok there the, the graph is restricted 
uh, with respect to the x. Those are our different inequalities. Uh, that is where we can use this problem. So let me end the presentation here. Uh, there is a final uh, episode for this uh, series. So this is a four presentation series. I will see you there.